welcome to According to John Unbridled. Today we're covering part two of myths, lies, and deception of the government-run education system. And with me to help get this going and to actually complete it is Keith Algazine. Brother, how are you doing today? Uh, amazing. Thank you for having me. Right, man. I'm, I'm so excited. I really enjoyed the last podcast uh, because if you listen to part one, what you got in part one was uh, Keith's walk, the, the, his testimony in this process where he has started it and um, it's not been easy. And he, he took these steps. So to sit here and give the information, he's already started the process and his own walk and what God's called him to do. So in today's episode, uh, what we're going to discuss is the, the meat and potatoes of the myths and the lies and the deception. We're going to show you. Uh, Keith has charts and he, he has all the stuff that we need to get into this. So uh, let's have a word of prayer and then, uh, and then we're going to jump right into this, okay? Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you, Father, so thankful for the opportunity that you have given us to uh, serve and to present truth. And so, Father, today I just pray that you are glorified in this, and Lord, that as we walk away, we walk away with an understanding and, and understand the necessity of making changes to better appropriate uh, the things we do that line up with your word and bring our children closer to you and out of the Roman system. Father, we thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so we're going to get into this and, and uh, uh, the myths, the lies, and the deception. And brother, I'm handing it over to you. All right. So just quick recap on sort of what the actual call that I had was, right? The call was that... God is going to do something big. Like, mm. That's the first thing. He's going to do something big here, and he is going to help change a generation. He is going to help, whether it's a revival, right. saving a remnant. Um, but, but there is a big thing he's doing, and he's going to do it with or without me or you or anybody. He's right, doing right, it. Right. And it was so clear. How cool is it, though, that he's decided to use us? Oh, that, that, that is where the – I just feel so humble. I feel so – grateful um but but it's also that realization that hit me it's like oh he's he, he's doing this meaning mm. it doesn't really matter what i do i could go get hit by a bus over here and right. you guys would find out like something big is going to happen so i'm just i'm in it for the ride and i'm excited that he's going to use me mm. and everything that i got is going to go into it because he's going to do something big he right. told me and i'm just so excited so the call is just completely uh, transform the education system. And I don't know if it's for two kids or, or, or 2 million kids, but it is a transformation of the education system. And something that right. really doesn't exist. Right. Um, but it was God's original design through mm. parents and homeschooling and the church and the body of Christ supporting. He's going to create a new education system, which was the one that he designed from the beginning of time. Amen. And I get to be a part of it. So that's the call right. um, that we sort of, that's the exciting part of, the of it. Yeah. That's yeah, the really yeah, exciting yeah. part about it. And the, is through what are these myths, lies, and deceptions that our government-run public education system is doing. So, I mean, the, the first thing is, like, listen, guys, you got to realize, and if you throw up this, this slide here, is like, who, I always say, like, I don't even need stats for this. Like, don't your eyes tell you this? Like, our youth today are isolated, lost, and suffering. Like, just look around you and you see it, you feel it, it's palpable, it's so sad. How many kids, how many young adults are depressed, are anxious, are well, and, fearful? And, and by the way, if you guys didn't listen to the podcast on the uh, medical, what was that one that we did? Oh, it was just a mental health crisis. The mental health crisis, yeah. yeah. Uh, you'll get a real good understanding of of why the kids are all the things you just named um, out of those two podcasts. It was part one, part two on mental health crisis. Uh, got, that that'll be invaluable if you go back and, and listen for sure. So that then God really sort of really opened my eyes to yeah. You know why they're so isolated, lost, and suffering? That you see all this. It's because of only two reasons. They either don't know me mm -hmm. or they don't see me. So right. if you don't know God. 
And even if you know him, but you don't see him working in your life, in the people around you, and the result is isolation, well, and suffering. Because in today's world, if you don't experience God, he's not real. Yeah. And so then you walk away. Yeah, no, exactly right. And that's what we see happening. Mm-hmm. And that has just been devastating. So I'll, I'll throw up a few stats to mm-hmm. prove that <laughs> our, our youth are isolated, lost, and suffering. But I really challenge you guys, like, don't be such a slave to data that mm-hmm. trust your eyes on, on right. some of the stuff we're talking about. You'll, 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 really, you'll really do yourself uh, some justice there. Right. So if you look at this chart here, there's, there, there's two things here. Look at from 2000 to 2020. Forget the actual numbers. Just look at what we call the hockey stick. I mean, this thing is chugging along at a fairly even pace for a long time and does not feel good to be alive. Guys, like, look at that skyrocketing. I mean, you want to talk about isolating, lost, and suffering. These are, if you ask, like, do, do you feel good to be alive? This is basically people who feel like I, I'd be just as good dead as alive. I mean, are you kidding me? Wow. I mean, that is powerful. So again. Well, and, and, and I'll pull the chart up one more time because one of the things that we have to notice is that started when the smartphone mm. era started. Look at that hockey <laughs> stick, right? So all of a sudden you can see what's happening here, right? We start to move people away from relationships. And we move them further away from well, God. And, 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 and move them into a virtual world that they get to create, then they hate, but they don't know they hate it, but then they can't live without it. And it just, it's literally the human hamster wheel of destruction. And, and it is proven that you, th- that these electronics are destroying the minds of the, of the children. Here's another interesting fact. Steve Jobs would not allow the iPad in his home uh, because he said the, the electronics, he wouldn't allow them in his home for his children because he said they dumb them down and they're dangerous. Yeah. I mean, the truth of the matter is... And he re- created it. The reason it's getting so... Like, I would just call it, it's like a snowball rolling downhill, or in this case, uphill, the the hockey stick. It's because, to a large degree, the social media aspect of the electronics is getting worse and worse and worse. So, again, nothing's good. But if you just were to use the internet for email and researching a few things here and there, it still could be overused. It wouldn't be great. But the social media aspect... That's the destructive part. It's it's heroin. It puts your brain in a state of dependence on this constant feedback loop it's literally the same addictive properties Mm -hmm. and destructive properties as heroin so china created tiktok yep okay go and look at what all you gotta do is google this it comes right up china will not allow the things that are on tiktok in america is not allowed what is allowed in china it's all education videos. It's all, and, and I'm not talking, it's not LGBTQ videos, not, uh, uh, I mean, it is education on real science, real uh, animals, not people wanting to be cats, uh, real math, real life uh, uh, problems with solutions. They're training videos. Yeah. Everything China plays is a training video and everything that America plays is a training video. Also, the difference is ours is trained to dumb us down and destroy us. Theirs is trained to take their children to the next level. Yeah. It's so sad. And, and, and again, the, and China even said, we knew this would work to dumb down America. We just didn't know it would work so well. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Again, it's, it's, so this crazy. stuff is, is really undeniable. That's why I said when something gets so, und- like I always give a silly example, is like, hey, if you go up in an airplane and jump out of an airplane um, without a parachute, do we need a study to show you what will happen? <laughs> like, I don't need the data. Like, guys, look around you. These kids are isolated, lost, right. and suffering. I'm happy to show you the data. Some people are like, show me the data. But like, 
Come on, right. dude. Again, there'll never be a study to show what is the percentage that you get really messed up if you jump out of an airplane right. without a parachute. Right. How many How many one. will survive out of 1,000 that jump out of an airplane without a parachute right. 10,000 feet or above? Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think we can skip the study. Again, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a couple more, though. So you, can, you can show this one, too. But look what we are producing, right? So there's been a 92% increase in anxiety. Again, this goes back to our mental health thing. But again, they're isolated, so much so, like the last slide that they they don't even feel like being alive or it's good to be alive they are anxious beyond belief and if you are anxious by definition you are also depressed so these kids again the statistics are clear i don't want to hang on them because again i actually want you to look around and trust your eyes but the data is clear anxiety depression this isolated lost suffering fearful generation is a result of something it didn't happen by accident so i want you to see why it happened and the design of how it happened. And that's what we're gonna go through here. So the final sort of nail in the coffin that, that I like to say here is, listen, guys, if you think that the anxiety is bad, if you think the, you know, even taking your own life and suicide is bad, there ain't nothing worse than this next slide. So if you show this one, 70% of our young adults who are in church. So these are the kids that, that have the best chance 70% are dropping out of church. So even if you just show up to church on Sunday and Wednesday and, and, and you think that everything's fine, statistically, I'm here to tell you it's not fine. It's not fine. They're dropping out. They're walking away from the faith, which really lends the question, were they ever really saved? Were they really ever in the faith? I don't know. And we really have to start because it's one thing again to be anxious and depressed it's even worse to feel so bad that you want to kill yourself right but if you're losing souls and that's what the data i just said showed mm -hmm. you is then really um i'll pull this up one more time the data yeah it, it's it, it's an emergency like it is flat out an emergency um i like to say the school's on fire mm. so here we go so here's the next thing parents Okay, so I told you what the problem is with the children, the, our youth in general. They are clearly isolated, lost, and suffering. So here we go. Parents, what's the problem on the parents' end? They either feel ill-equipped and or, I should say, they lack full responsibility for their children's education because they have simply said, okay, clearly only the experts in the government-run schools can do this, so I'll give them to them. And by the way, it's not really my responsibility anyway. Isn't that why we have schools? It's their responsibility. Well, and, and well, here's the funny thing. When you gave schools the responsibility, uh, it didn't take long for them to take advantage of that. And then what they do, they took authority over your children. And now the school system says, they're not your children, they're ours. We just uh, let them stay with you. Yeah, and um, honestly, why 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 would they why would they say any different? So, st the, the the stat that I'll show here is is sort of if you look where we are today, it's about the same as 1975. So 2010 was the last time they kept track of this. I think it's on purpose because they know it's getting worse and they want it to get worse. But basically, what this is saying is, you know, you you can get rid of this because it's it, it's it's easy to just explain in this plain terms, not this chart. Ready? Here's the thing. The average mom spends one hour a day with their children today, raising them up. The average dad, less than 30 minutes, like 27 minutes. And that's the day. average. That's the average. Wow. Okay, so. And then we wonder what's wrong with our society. Okay, right? So now let's do the comparison. Okay, so 60 minutes mom, 30 minutes or so dad. How about the school? The school literally has between school itself between any bus rides or riding with friends to any after school curricular activities and homework and home it's like 8 to 10 hours a, a day. day so we're talking minutes versus hours we're talking 10 times more show this next slide right here okay guys here's the aha moment in a lifetime between like K through 12 the average parents are spending 2500 hours raising their children, teaching their children, dare I say, discipling their children, the public-run school system, 20,000 hours. 
20,000 versus 2,000 and change. Guys, so this is where you have to sort of be brutally honest with yourself. <sighs> Last time you used the statement, which I love, hey, what do you expect is the outcome if you send your kids to Caesar? Don't be surprised when if they, they come, come back out. at Romans. Romans. <laughs> That's right. But here's another one, and this one's a real gut punch, guys, but I'm sorry. I talk to a lot of parents, and when, when things are not going well with their kids or, or as they've grown up and they're upset with um, – they just they, they go. I don't understand. I raised them so much better. You didn't raise them. Mm. The government raised them. That's just the truth. Look at the data. It's Dude, just so. A fact. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. And of course, according to John, has never been um, uh, soft or or uh, uh, we don't we don't we just speak truth, and it is what it is, guys. I don't apologize for what Keith said. I want you to hear what Keith said. You didn't raise them. When you have 25, uh, uh, hundred hours with your children and the school has 20,000 hours with your children, you, the, the bigger influence will always win. Of course. And then the, 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 the well, I took them to church. Okay, great. And I took them to Wednesday. Oh, both? So you're talking two hours a mm. week versus 50, 60? You're, 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 you're still behind. Behind? <laughs> I mean, you can't. They're not even right. on the same planet. Right. Right. Like one is raising. Mm. One is sprinkling a little here and mm. there. Who do you think is going to win? Of course. Right. Like, actually, it's... The it's, rainfall always wins. Always, right. always. So, right. again, I, I bring that up because... You need the gut punches. Mm -hmm. If you can't recognize whatever you have done but, wrong, but in you the know, past, well, so here's the thing: you're gonna fix it in the future, <clears throat> right? Here's here's what's interesting. Most people, and, and and this is why that was that was a gut punch for some. And and I'm gonna ask you to take your defenses down just a second, because your child lives with them and you see them roaming in and out. That roaming in and out, and, and by the way, it's even less now because they're in their rooms on their phones, right? And they're hiding out. They're not even. They're not even uh, uh, connected anymore. No, they're they're right. so disconnected, right. and and so now you have uh, fifty hours a week in the schools, and then you have um, how many hours a week on social media? Oh, yep. Which is another three to five hours a day on e social media these days, which is so sad but so true. Yep. Yeah. And then, so the reality is you see them in passing and they live with you and that's why you sit back and go, I'm with them more than that. The reality is they're passing. They're not, right. I mean, they're in the same room, they're in the house or whatever, but they come and they go and you guys could sit down and have the TV on uh, and you're watching a movie and you think you're watching a movie together, but the truth is their face is deep in their phone. They don't hear anything or see anything going on. And, and parents are like, whatever. And then you update and upgrade their phone so they can keep separating from you. And so now you got the school winning and you got social media winning and your child is losing. Mm. They are. And that, 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 that's really the main point here. So, all right. Mm. So we got, obviously the main sort of goal here is to open our eyes to what our children are suffering from. The next goal is like what our parents are doing wrong, how they are just completely letting go of their God-given responsibility. Right, right. Um, but the final piece actually is, remember we said that this, what I feel strongly that God is going to move in is this combination of parents with the primary authority, but then using the body of Christ, the church, to help supplement, mm -hmm. because that's always how it was. So the reason why this is a big problem today that needs to be changed is, the elders, the spiritually mature Christians, honestly, I think, and you probably know this better than I do, I think a lot of them feel empty because they're hungry for more meaningful ministry mm -hmm. than they have right now. And, and they don't understand the power of the ministry of mm -hmm. discipleship. Yes. Because <clears throat> that's, that's really where it's at. But that, it requires one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, or, you know, like, sure. like yeah, it's yeah. a small number. Yep. Um, and it it's, requires a commitment of faithful every week. And it requires studying every week and reading the Bible every week and pouring into someone that, and, and then nobody ever sees what you do. And so are you okay with having a ministry that absolutely changes and revolutionizes lives 
or do you need to have the glory? Right. Uh, I'll take the glory on graduation day. Yeah, man. I give all that glory to God, man. He um, he is the mm. one who deserves all of the glory. Right. There's nothing glorious about us. Let's right. Be so I, I think that now you put all this together, right? And, and basically what you have is you have this sort of, I, I see this triangle that he's building, which is at the center or the top is the is the children and then and the youth in general honestly i say children but the reality is it's a generation that's getting lost from from birth to 30 i'm not Mm, even kidding right so this whole generation and then down here at the the pieces that need to come together is parental authority and responsibility taking back what's your right. god-given responsibility right. and the body of christ helping to supplement and you kind which, of put which this all by together. the way taking back could become a war you just got to be ready to win the war i mean honestly because dude listen nobody likes to give up uh anything and so if you're going to take your children back that means you got to be willing to fight I, I, I say I would say undoubtedly, and and actually you, you brought it up, but bring it up again. That gets you right here. So, like, are you really ready to fight? And, and an analogy that I like to use is, what would you do if your child's school was on fire right now? Right? Well, I give some silly examples here. Well, you know, multiple choice. Choice A: Would you talk to your teacher about fire education? Remember what I said: the school's on fire right now. You just got a text saying your 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 kid's school is on fire right now. Would you go talk to the teacher about fire education? Would you go to the school board meeting and shout about we need better fire education? Would you talk to your child if he makes it home or he or she makes it home alive? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. What you would do is you would run, run down to- at school and go, is my kid okay? And if not, you'd run in and you'd try right. to save them. Right. So right. I, I go to, to so much to say is like you're already in the battle. You don't know it. You want to know what's worse than like fighting an uphill battle or feel like you're losing a battle being in a battle that you don't even know you're in and that's what's going on right now so your analogy is perfect except it's even worse because the battle's here you're in it and you don't know it so right. wake up is my first thing is like your child school is on fire or another analogy you are in a full out battle for your child's soul period you're in it you can say you're not in it you can pretend you're not in it you can think you're not in it you're in you're it. in it you're in it yeah so anyway the, the the whole point about this is like we said what are you going to do about it your school right. is on fire right now what are right. you going to do all right so here's the here's the sort of next thing that it, like let's get rid into all this stuff you could still just say well keith i, I disagree I don't think the school is on fire. I think mm. the government-run education system is good. So I have made an informed decision to say I am responsible for my um, my child, and I take full responsibility, and I delegate that responsibility to the school because I think that they're doing a fine job, and I'm supplementing with my home, mm-hmm. and I'm supplementing with church on Sunday, and, and I'm good. Well, let me just walk you through what – the actual school system was designed to do and why i'll just tell you you're wrong mm-hmm. like and end the yeah. story i'm just sorry yeah you're, you're wrong you're, you're wrong yeah. so i love this question that you actually have on this and i'm gonna i'm gonna put it up before anybody or you answer it or or i give it up so so the question is is the the question is is that you have on your powerpoint is the education system broke that is a good question. And if I ask even most people, like you, if, if right, you could right, hear, I don't right. know if you heard the audio I did. on well, Sunday. So, so I, I was oh, listening okay. to the sermon, yeah. and everybody was like, hey, man, yes, they raised their oh, hand, yes. you know, because you said if you think it's broke. Yes, or whatever. I said, I want to hear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so they were raising their hand. They all agreed that it was broken. And, and, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually on the motorcycle, <laughs> and uh, I was either on the motorcycle or in the car. I don't know. But either way, I'm, I'm watching it. And, and I went, my answer, <laughs> my answer was no, it's not broke. Right. Everybody in the auditorium, I could hear going, yes, it's broke, it's broke, it's broke. 
And then I was like, they were so excited to participate. I was like, it was like one of those like chant backs, like because like, I mean, you could feel this thing building, right? You could right, feel right. the servant <laughs> building. You could feel people getting fired up. And I'm like, so is the education system broken? Yeah, they all yell. Yeah. And I'm like, no. no. And they all just were like, wait, I got the question wrong. And I'm like, oh, you got it wrong. You got mm. it so wrong. Because so, I remember, well, I remember looking at Sherry and I said, it's not broke. Is running exactly the way they want it. Nailed it. So and that, I and I told my wife I went powerful question because that is exactly right. If you believe that the education system is broken, which that's even remember, many people say it's not broken. Mm. Other people have said, "Well, I think it's broken." You are implying two two tremendously flawed logics. Mm -hmm. Number one, you're implying that it was good. Like if something, if, if, right. if I fall down and break my arm, it was good. Now it's broken, right? It's the, the most basic analogy in the world, but it was good at one point. Right. Um, there's your first mistake. Secondly, right. you're right. implying that it can be fixed. Yeah. So those are two fatal, fatal flaws that, that we've got to get used to. And, and I gave another example, which I'll give here too, because I think it's really powerful is if something is fundamentally wrong from the start, it's, it's wrong from the start, it can never be right. right. Something that's wrong right. can never be right. Well, and, like and, and I don't know that, white. well, I don't know that people realize that the public education system, the schools was started by the Rockefellers and they started it because they wanted to start a process of teaching people how to become submissive to a process, uh, uh, go in the school, sit down, learn, wait till the bell rings. When you hear the bell, you get up and you go to the next class. You get to the next class before the next bell rings. You sit down, the bell rings, you go quiet. You get, I mean, like, like the whole, it, it was a training oh. of, of destruction. Oh, well, we're going to get there. I promise. So, so, oh, yeah. so, but here's what's interesting about Yale, Harvard, um, uh, all these big main colleges, they were all started by pastors and or Christians that wanted to teach people the gospel to send them out into the world to teach people the gospel. There were two, you know, one, one was started, uh, the, the, the education. Oh, how far we have fallen. <laughs> you imagine Wow. It's crazy. Go ahead, man. I didn't mean to, I didn't no, mean to no, take it, I, but I go just, ahead. Uh, it's just, uh, so, so yeah, so it was really a powerful thing because a lot of people think it's broken. It's not broken. And I'll give two other examples, right? So this is how wrong, very specifically, government-run public education is. If you think that that can be fixed, let me ask you this. Do you think the porn industry can be fixed? Right. Imagine, imagine saying like, you know what? We just need to fix it. It's gotten too hardcore. We just need to get back to the soft porn things. <sighs> Can you oh, imagine yeah. how nuts that sounds? Right. How about this one? Even worse. I think we need to fix the drug smuggling problem. Fix the drug smuggling problem? Like, yeah, you know, like back when we were just smuggling like like marijuana and cocaine. And it wasn't it so wasn't, laced well, with everything. It wasn't <laughs> like fentanyl. Right. Do you see how crazy that sounds? Porn is wrong, period. <laughs> drug smuggling is wrong, period. It cannot be fixed. Right. Right. Well, here's what can it has be to be eliminated. It just has to be completely eliminated. That's right. And, and you have to realize right. that that's how wrong the yeah. government run public education system is. It started that wrong, just as porn started wrong, just as drug smuggling started wrong, or any number yeah. of sort of things that I could mention. But here's what can be fixed things like marriage, like we mm -hmm. talked about last time, family. Yeah. And the church. Yeah. Those things are, quite frankly, right. broken in America. Right. But guess what? If it's a God given, here's the key. So, this is, we cannot miss this. Right. If it's a God given institution, then it can be fixed. Right. Because it was right, right. from the start. Exactly. Was government run education God given? Right. Right. No. See, the church can be fixed because that was a God institution. Exactly. God instituted the church. Exactly, and and if we get back to to the basics, that can, then that means that those who are, who are off the chart right now can be fixed. Absolutely. Um, but you're right. School was man made. School was man made. It's not God made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and was, anything man made is doomed for destruction. Yeah, especially when you start to put it all together. So let me give you a, a few things. If you want to throw this up, you can. But like, I want to just kind of walk through a few of these things. The public education system was designed. 
okay, to remove God and to remove free will. You touched on it, which I'll get on in, in a few minutes, um, Rockefeller. Um, mm-hmm. Rockefeller wasn't so much to remove God. That was sort of step A. Rockefeller came in and really scaled public education to the behemoth that it is today. But his main goal was he just wanted to get rid of free will. Right. He wanted slave workers to run <laughs> his factories and to run his businesses. He didn't want these right. darn freedom-loving, God-loving, Free thinking. potentially <laughs> competing, you know, people. He wanted right. slave workers yep. who just right. do what you're told right. so I can grow my business, come right. work in my factories, come work for my companies mm-hmm. the way I want without questioning, without thinking on your own. So he was on the free will side. Well, and, and if you think about the school as regimented like an assembly, line exactly exactly again working he better than ever yep so he, perfectly designed he set the school up so that they would be trained to respond pavlov's dog oh yeah <laughs> exactly ding ding yeah. ding 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 you start drooling that's it ding 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 move to my next class well what's that art what'd you do before science how do you connect? Like now, you're just like your, your left yeah. brain and your right brain. Yeah. Like it's just a total mess. Anyway, yeah. but what I'm going to focus here now for the next few minutes is remember the public education system. I'm going to say this over and over because this is the only way you will understand how it is not broken. It is working perfectly right. as designed. Right. It was built to remove God and to remove free will. So first, let's talk about removing God. Right. Mm-hmm. So here you go. In the Bible. In the word of God, in truth, mm-hmm. we believe that there is absolute truth. And right. it is biblical truth. What does the public run school say? There is no, no truth. truth. <laughs> like it's your truth, it's my truth. All truth your feelings. Is, yeah, truth it, is dependent on you, not you and how your feelings are. Right. Right. God says he created absolutely everything, all the heavens and the earth. What does the government run school say? It was a big bang big theory. Bang. Somehow magically something came from nothing, right. which is absolutely right. impossible. <laughs> uh God made all living things. That's that's the truth. Right. Uh, what does the government-run public school system say? Well, we got to remove God. So evolution. Right. We yeah. all came from a single cell amoeba. Now, now think about this, right? If they really, if the school system really wanted you to learn, let's just let's just go back. Maybe I'll pull up your list. So, uh, truth versus uh, no truth. Yep. Um, and the school system teaches. Um, be what you want to be. It's up to you. If that's the way you feel, then that's true. And that's the way, and we're going to support that blah, mm-hmm. versus the real truth is, uh, you're a human being. There are only boys and girls. There is nothing else. Uh, you cannot be a cat. We're not going to give you a litter box. Nope. Nope. What do they do? They are in step one. They have taken out absolute truth and put in uh, uh, whatever, you know, unicorns and fairy tale uh, dust. Number two, God's creation versus Big Bang. Do you realize that in the, I know you do, <laughs> but in the school system, guys, um, creation is not allowed to be taught. Mm-hmm. Only evolution. Why? Well, because if that's what we teach you is true, then anybody that tries to throw something else into the pot, you go, no, that doesn't fit, so throw it out. And since you're convinced that your teachers taught you truth, which is funny because they'll stand on evolution being absolute truth, even though they don't believe in absolute truth. It's like, come on, guys. Well, that's about your truth, my truth, no truth, except when I tell you it's truth. (laughs) Yeah, right. And then that's it. And they're like, no, I don't believe your truth, my truth. I believe my truth. Well, there's no absolute truth. Yeah, well, you're a liar. I mean, it's like, but the school has taught them how to not think, but only respond yes. or react yes. to what they've been taught. And so then, then, uh, anyway, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I jumped in there. Go no, ahead. No, but you, I'll, I'll just to stick on that point. The reason why they attack things like creation, um, like, God absolute truth man and yep. woman like absolute truth is is if you can st- destroy those fundamentals it, it's like if you want to really like bring down a building man you know br- bring down the first floor the rest will collapse right kind of thing it's like if you bring down the foundation of anything the rest collapses right so if if god didn't create everything if the bible isn't true well then i almost the whole there's nothing else that matters like you've done your job you've you've well, is re, you re, you've removed god there's so no god and yet. and once you remove god what do you do you establish self morals yes and then when you're a country that has no moral compass 
uh, you're going to fall like Rome did. Yes. Because that's what happened. Rome lost its identity, then lost its, uh, first off, lost its moral compass, then lost its identity, and then fell. Uh, America did what? Uh, America lost its moral compass, and and so now we are losing our identity because people we don't know who America is anymore. We're definitely not the America we used to be. And then what's the next? Um, and, and by the way, they say that the minute... Uh, transgenderism becomes the main push is uh that is the last step for the country to collapse and the, and and that's what rome that's what happened to rome and so that's what they're doing you you take away your identity then there's no moral uh no moral compass or no moral compass no rea- uh no identity they go hand in hand it's a collapse well it, so you just hit my last my, my next point i should say so again god says created man and woman that's it just two now like you said hundreds of genders um, here's another so, so that 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 is a uh uh one worth spending a minute on so i'm glad you did another one is god values human life in fact it is the most precious thing we completely devalue human life but, but you know why because we have no morals yeah right if, if you have no moral compass there's no value in life Right. I mean, you, you just see the, the thing that really, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's, I don't know how to not make it uh, political, even though it, it, I almost don't even want to make it political because it's so, such a bigger issue. Right. It, it transcends politics. But the, uh, when I say value human life, what they're really saying is like, who cares about you? You, 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 you are you are nothing like, and your, that's, like your dog is more like right, you see like right. i mean literally we see dogs like more important like pa- like i see parents care more about right, their dogs right. than their but, kids and that's why children are depressed and full of anxiety and everything else because they don't see their value yeah it, it, it go it goes into uh, abortion right mm-hmm. i mean it, they don't value human life i mean kill babies at any time i mean they're they're, they're running buses out there mm-hmm. i mean literally like hey who's who wants to kill their baby today? Mm-hmm. And people get real offended when I say that. But that's just the truth. I well, mean, and they're, they're, and they're, adver- they're advertising, don't want to keep your baby? Call, hurry up, right. come here. We'll get rid of it real quick for you. So think about it's crazy. this. An entire country willing to sacrifice everything in their country to have the right to abort. Yes. Right. We'll sacrifice everything. Just give me the right to abort my child. Right. That's that's how crazy on demand access yeah. to 24/7 mm-hmm. 365 mm-hmm. no matter right. what from right. conception all the way right. to just before uh birth. Now uh, well we now, is, now this is and I'm uh, well it is what it is. This is the Democratic Party platform. It's their platform. They're running on abortion. They're they're trying to win they're trying to win the country on the right to murder. Can I tell you what's way sadder than that? It's working. Yep. Think about it. It's working. It, I th- know. Th- they're winning, so it's working. Mm-hmm. That literally means that's my point. This is the government run public education system. Right. Um they're winning. Yeah. And I did a I did a podcast two, three weeks ago. Well now I don't know when this is gonna go up, but I did a, a podcast if you go back and look, um, the return of Molech. Mm. That's Mole- the child sacrifice. Exactly. That's the child sacrifice. It is, it, it is no different. You're Molech right. is all in the scriptures about sacrificing children, and and it says that those gods will return. If you kick God out, then those false gods, deities, will return. And Molech has returned stronger than ever um, because we are literally willing to kill people that are trying to stop us from killing people <laughs> yeah no no it, it is it, it is Moloch. like the, the child sacrifice thing is like well that was that was the god who is the god today that you are sacrificing these children to the god of self it's simply i don't want this child right. so i will kill it you are sacrificing the child to yourself think about it well it's, 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 it's the god of you it's well it is molech oh, i want to back up a second because here's the thing yeah you're doing it or whoever does it does it out of selfish reasons yes so yeah they're definitely for them but who's driving child sacrifice molech Right, right. No, I, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, yeah. just I, for clarity in our statements. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just incredible that we have got to the point mm. who would have ever thought we would 
devalue right. human life like we right. do today. Right. But that is what our our, mm-hmm. our schools are doing. And so, then here's another one, dude. Get into that one that you are about to jump in right now. So the the schools teach that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of races. The Bible is so right. clear, guys. Right. There's one race, the human race. The human race. That's it. We all come from Adam. But That's the it. school and our government is dividing uh now hate the whites everything's the whites fault right uh because the whites were racist toward the blacks and so instead of saying hey why don't we really get rid of racism nope let's turn the blacks against the whites now and turn everybody against the whites because the whites are the problem but think how far we've come how do we even get to that the first because everyone just assumes the first lie which there are dozens of races we couldn't even get that's why it's like it's so critical to realize how far, because everyone's like, we just, right. again, it's back to the fixing. We should, all, all these races should get along. What do you mean all these races? You're <laughs> already wrong in your right. statement. There's one right. race. There's right. other cultures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's other countries. Other ethnicities. But there's other ethnicities. Sure. Sure. But there is sure. one race. Sure. So think about that. You blow up that first lie. You make that fact. Mm-hmm. Now you even have the opportunity to tear mm-hmm. people apart yeah. by race. Yeah. But if you right. don't accept the right. first lie, right. That the school teaches, right. which there are dozens and dozens of races, right. then you can't even get to the place where. Well, at today. well, and how about this too, right? So, how crazy is it that they have? Because right now it's a massive hate against whites. Whites are the problem. White supremacy. White privilege. Right. Right. Uh, um, what? And then you ask them, okay, what privilege do whites have over anybody else? Well, there is none. There's not one. Right. And then you when when blacks think there is and so they 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 uh attack whites or racist toward whites or they make racist comments the government and the schools are like oh no blacks can't be racist All right only whites are racist you want to know what the scariest thing <laughs> about so so that's like but the, that's what the education system does they they teach you well they again it, 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 it's so hard for me so, to get off the, the <laughs> I call it first order principles. If you screw up the first order, which is yeah, one race, this is true. We could go on all day mm-hmm. about right. the pro because right. you can create a billion problems, mm-hmm. which they are by design mm-hmm. all because you just believe the first lie. I mean, just to, just to think how crazy it is today. I actually know, and it gets tiny sample size, but personally I know more black people that, don't believe this yep. lie, yep. then it is literally, mm-hmm. it is like this mm-hmm. middle age elite white people who believe that they are awful mm-hmm. racists and that they <laughs> are, are these horrible human beings. And they're apologizing, that, and they're apologizing for being apologizing white. For being white more than I, I can't Which tell Which they you, can't, can't change. Tell, how many of my, my black friends are like, dude, I admit this is crazy town. <laughs> like, this is crazy. I go to my white friends if they're in a certain kind of elitist class right. and they'll be like, well, you know, we got to make up for our past. And we're like, I'm like, go talk to your friend. Like, yeah, like has, he doesn't even want right, it. Right. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, and nobody alive today. How crazy is that, though? Yeah, nobody alive today has been a slave or owned slaves. Yeah, anyway. but yet everybody wants to hold somebody accountable for something they weren't even here for. I the the insanity. It's but ins- like you said, it's insane. If they lose, but but if they lose, one of the things that you had up was no value of life. Oh yeah. And so here we are. There you are. Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's but, but see what I'm saying? If you right, go back to these right. first order principles and right. you actually got back to these, that's the reason I brought up these first order principles. Like people think it's so basic. Oh, creation and man and woman and value life and right. race. Right. Dude, if we actually just went back to believing those, mm. we wouldn't, there wouldn't right. be any of these. Like we're trying right. to solve problems right. that aren't even a problem well, well, because they're, you remember, they're, they're built on a lie. Do you remember Black Lives Matters? Of course. And then if if you, listen, I lost friends because I would not agree with the movement Black Lives Matters. And my, my point was uh, black people matter, um, but all lives matter. Right. Like, uh, right. But if you said all lives matter, Right. You were, Dude, hate, you were, you were hate speech or something. Yeah. And you could have been killed if you were in the wrong, in the wrong area. Right. But like, because they convinced people to believe the first lie, which then they lost exactly. their moral compass. And instead of saying, 
yeah, you know what? Everybody has a right to life. It's like, oh no, oh no, only we have a right, right to life. Right, right. And it's like, oh my goodness, how did we, how, how did, did we, we get here? How Again, did we get here? But, but that's the point. Here's how we got here. Yeah. We teach right from the beginning of kindergarten on that there are dozens and dozens of races. And then once you believe that, then as you get older mm -hmm. in school, then they teach you about all the race problems. Right. And then they, right. first order principles. Speaking well, it, what, what's interesting is people don't have a problem that dogs have a dog family, cats have a cat family, whether it's a tiger or your little house, meow, meow. Um, people don't have a problem with that. Horses, zebras, they're all in the same horse family, right? We don't have a problem with that. But for some reason, we can't believe that all people are of the people family, the human. But yet, they'll reference themselves as human. Again, it's <laughs> by design. That, that is the point. So... Hit, hit this next one. I'll fly through these quick, but it's important, right? So um, God tells us that men and women are completely equal in value, but completely different in their roles, responsibility, um, their God-given gifts, their anatomy. Stop. Anatomies. You are hateful, and you are <laughs> yes, a bigot, right. and you I'm are horrible. feminist or, right. or, or anti-feminist or whatever. <laughs> Dude, how dare you? Oh. But it's true. It's just a fact. Again, it's true. simple fact. How about this one? Is Sex true. is only for marriage. It's a gift for, and a glory. It's actually, it, it can glorify God if done in the right way through marriage. Right. That's what the Bible teaches. Why are you trying to stop people from having fun? Unlimited premarital sex. <laughs> That's just, just wear a condom. Maybe, I guess. I don't know what they teach well, now in public health. Do you, but, what do you remember? They used to hand out condoms to the not, kids. That's what, so I mean, because it's th that's what they're teaching. So again, you get rid of the first order principles. How about this? God gave us marriage as an amazing gift where one plus one can equal three or maybe one plus one equals five. Actually, sometimes when I see what me and my wife can do when we're really in God's design, um, what do they say? Don't get married. Uh, it's very restrictive. Oh, it's, yeah. you know, you're, don't be, don't be, don't be, uh, and if you are going to get married, oh, yeah. you better yeah. wait till you yeah. get all your other priorities. And, and oh, and women, straight. and women, don't you dare let your husbands try to. Exactly. That's so exactly. crazy. Right? Well, that goes to the next one, right? The Bible teaches men are the providers and protectors. Uh, what 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 is the the basic schools say? Men are just a bunch of bumbling idiots, or they're worse. They're they're just like horrific Hitlers. They mm -hmm. want to kill and rape and 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 plurge everyone. What, all you got to do the other. Yeah, all you got to do is watch uh, sitcoms and yes. movies and yes. or commercials. Yes. Actually, that's a great point. Every movie, every sitcom, there is only two archetypes for men the evil murdering rapist cold-blooded killer or the stupid or idiot the total dumb idiot thank goodness he has a wife or a girlfriend <laughs> know, right? otherwise he wouldn't even be able he to get can't out of bed think and talk, for himself talk and, and they walk himself well and they convince the children that <laughs> dad's right. an idiot yeah oh of course and so then there's no respect for dad no. and then dad steps out and i'm not saying that dad's uh, dad's wrong anytime he steps out but here's right. my point uh after a while dad gets tired of being the idiot right Right, of course. And right. so, if he steps out, now he's a loser. Yes. I mean, like there's no, there's no win for men today. Absolutely. Not. How about this one? Children are a gift from God. That's the fact. Uh, what do they say? Children are a burden. You better get, you better get everything lined up. Your job, your career, your this, your that, and be, don't even think about having children before then. And then, right. once you do have children, they're a really big burden. Send them off to the school so you can go live your job and your career, um, because they're they're just a burden. How sad is that? What an amazing, I mean, God-given yeah. gift that he has given us in children. That's not what they teach. They teach essentially children are a burden. You live yep. for you. They're a little sideshow. How about this? We are to pursue truth and wisdom. The Bible is so clear that, that we are to focus on truth and wisdom. The school, it's literally, like you said, it's Pavlov. Like A plus B equals C. Go ding, ding, ding. Um, just know these facts. Well, there's no pursuit of truth. There's no pursuit Correct. of wisdom. There's no. Well, and here's the problem. None of that. They want you. There, the idea is just know these facts. And then what? behind closed doors, they're changing the facts. Yeah, yeah. Well, the facts are whatever they want. They're whatever no. they want them to be. <laughs> yeah. That's right. They're not true facts. But what they're really doing, though, so this is the sinister part. Some people think right. that, well, why does that, right? It's not actually the facts that they care about, because like you point, they're going to change the facts however they fit mm -hmm. their narrative and way. But really what they're teaching you is to comply. Yep, They're that's teaching it. you to comply. That's it. I said this, mm. so this. Okay. So even if this changes, right. what did you really learn? Mm. That if 
The okay. experts tell me that A is true, A is true. And if the experts tomorrow tell me B is true, then B, I have learned yeah. to comply instead of, hmm, why? Right, right. Why is that? Well, so here's, here's, How does that work? This, like, this proves your point right here is word definitions. Yes. So people knew what words meant. We understand what words meant. Now they've changed the definitions of them. And so we're supposed to just go, oh, it's changed now. Well, okay. didn't it used to mean, nope, no, nope, not today. Nope, nope. Uh, so, for example, gay. Gay used to mean happy, joyous. Yes. That's such a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you were gay. You were gayest, right? Not today. Oh, that's if you are straight and you say gay, that's a bad thing because gays have taken over the definition of gay. And now when you hear gay, there's nobody that thinks of happy. Right. You know? Um, or or how about this? Fag. <gasps> he said fag on the podcast. Fag used to mean a stick. <laughs> it's funny. This was uh, maybe out of touch. I am. I didn't know either one of those. I fag. think I knew gay was maybe if you told yeah, me, but yeah. I definitely didn't know fag was yeah. a stick. I, I didn't so even know. So fag that. was a stick, and then I did go to a government-run public education right. system. So that's probably why. <laughs> but, and then, and then uh, for military, it used to be uh, or anybody, and they used to say, "Hey, give me a fag." Well, what you wanted was a stick or a cigarette, uh, right? Well, Today, if you say fag, mm. oh, but the world is coming unglued. But what have we done? We took what was what was facts, changed the definition, and what have people done? They've went with it. Yeah, so, so um, to give you another example, you know, in your genes, you have a little pocket at the top of your big pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, today they're like, oh yeah, that's for condoms. <laughs> no, it is a watch pocket. That's funny. It was designed to carry your watch. Your watch would be on a little chain. And so this was before they wrapped on wrist and then you would pull the watch out, tell the time, close it up and put it back in. It was a, it's a watch pocket. Uh, no, no. In today's society, they have taught them that it's for condoms and you're going, Oh my goodness. Um, it's dude, I'm telling you, I can go on and on and on. And it's just, it's bad. It is. So the, the the final thing that I think is important to touch on here is even yeah, if... Yeah, I kind of derailed you with all those definitions, but go ahead, brother. <laughs> no, it's a good example. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on track. I got, I'm on a mission, right? Remember? I got to tell, tell the world this stuff. That's right. That's so right. so the, 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 the thing that I will occasionally hear is, hey, you know what? You know what? All that stuff, maybe, maybe not. But, you know, I still think we can just do better with school by, you know, just getting better. We got to get back to reading, writing, and arithmetic. How, how many times have you yeah, heard that? Right. That goes along with the same philosophy of, you know, fixing uh, schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just not doing that well with all this other stuff that you said. Yeah, that's kind of true, Keith. But, like, like, if we just get back to reading, writing, and arithmetic. Well, wait a minute. Uh, here's a problem with getting back with that. Reading, writing, arithmetics. Now they say two plus two can be five. Yeah. That's okay. So the slide that I showed you was actually just saying, it's like, listen, guys, we're horrible at this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we are tanking. And the reason I want you to know that is it's, it's not going to get any better. The only way it's going to get better is if they change the standards. Right. But, like well, you, you can see in this chart that's up, it's, it's getting bad. It's getting bad. And, and here, here's the reason. They're not interested in teaching, reading, writing, or thing. That is a sideshow mm -hmm. for the real, original reason that the public-run right. right. system was done, which was mm -hmm. to do what? Remove God mm -hmm. and remove free will. But you can't say that. Right. So what you have yeah. to say is we're doing reading, writing, and arithmetic. But well, well, how about this? You suck at teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> Look at the data. Why? Because right. you're actually not interested in it. What you're really interested in is all the things that we told you when we went through the list. This is what God believes. This is yep. what the schools believe. This is really the agenda that right. we are out for. We well, have to throw I, in I, some reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I can prove it to you that you're right. Number one. Um, kids don't know how to write cursive today. Correct. Why? Well, because we're not even teaching them how to write because, well, they got a keyboard. They don't need to write. They don't need it. Take away the keyboard, then now they can't communicate. 
interesting. Number two, uh, kids today, and when I say kids, I'm talking graduates and college yeah, right, right. students. Um, you give them a digital clock, they're in. <laughs> you give them an analog clock, <laughs> they have no clue That's what funny. time it is. That's funny. They, the, the, the basics, because remember, like you said, tear down the foundation, everything yes. else crumbles. The basics, writing, can't do. Tell time, can't do. Uh, I, I, they have dumbed down this society so far that it is amazing. If we're going to be back to uh, make an X for your signature. Do you remember how when you, you were talking about Rockefeller and, and how he was just trying to create these, these, these slave workers? Um, but the, the why behind all this, like where did this come from? It actually started before Rockefeller, so it's probably mm -hmm, good to right, end on this. Right. Here's what happened, right? So back in the late 1800s, um, there was a whole movement by a few elites who just hated America. Like I said, they, they, they hated God and they hated America. They, they well, they hated want... America because they didn't want it to be free. Correct. Yeah. Right, right. Just, but, just for clarity of why, because that's so important yeah. for the why they're heading us the same direction. Right, right. No, it's it's... But they hated freedom because mm -hmm. they hated God. Remember, freedom only comes from God. There is right. really no right. other true freedom. Right. So they were a bunch and of And if atheists. you have freedom in Christ, you are you can think for yourself. Oh, you, and they don't want well, they that. They don't want any of that, exactly. So they, they, they started um, to create a, a system that would remove God because they were tired, like I said, of this, this God- faring, God-loving, free country. And that was their whole original goal. How do we get a public-run education system that will remove God and remove free will? That was the goal. Right. It started, okay, actually over in Prussia, which is modern-day Germany, mm -hmm. uh, because they already had an authoritarian state. In America, they couldn't do that in the late 1800s because we were, we were still too close to our founding principles, right. and you are not going to take away freedom. You are not going to take God out mm -hmm. of it. Right. Um, but in, in modern-day uh, Germany, which was then Prussia, they already had an authoritarian state. So they caught wind of this idea that America was trying to do, and they said, we'll just institute it because we have an authoritarian. So sorry, right. parents. Right. You, the kids belong to us. Yep. We'll raise them up. And, oh, boy, did it work. Mm -hmm. So that obviously got us to eventually Nazi Germany and the right. horrors of that. Yeah, but do you know what got – do you know what really put – America on the on the map of destruction or on the road to destruction was you you're saying the education system but even that was a slow process mm -hmm. with oh, yeah. getting it with was. getting the yeah. the American children so here's what we did let let's get moms it was the feminist movement yep let's get moms out of the house and into the workforce so they can feel like they're somebody and the meanwhile, uh, Hitler said, if you want to get a nation, get the children. And so now we have from birth, we have someone else raising, yes. we have a system raising the children, not mom and dad. Yes. And then we keep the economy as such that because once both go to work, uh, now divorce is higher rate because mom's out there in the field mm -hmm. and and so now divorce rate is up and then um all of a sudden we got two income so we can get more toys and so and then we get more toys and then we find out oh my goodness we really got to work the hours to keep the toys and then uh getting more debt with cars and houses and vacation yep. homes and both parents air quote, have to work. And, yep. so, yeah. and they're gone. Yeah. And so when they're gone, who's left to raise the children, the system? The school. And that's exactly right. So I think, guys, uh, all, all I can tell you is God's doing something here. He wants to take back a remnant into his fold through that God-given responsibility of parents and through the church. Right. And he might just be calling you to because when he does something – it is unmistakable, and Amen. he's doing something right now. So, yeah. boy, I got to tell you, um, I would really deeply pray um, about where you are in your home and your family and your children. And if God's moving, um, 
he may just move in you. Amen. Amen. Um, Keith, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, God bless you, so man. Much, man. Love having you on here. Uh, love the information. Uh, guys, listen, as you have listened to this podcast, if you need to rewind it and play it again, and then research the information because you'll find out that the information is incredibly accurate and this is the goal that they have in mind. And what you really got to do is pray about taking your children back uh, to, to save your children. And when we say we love our children, do we love them enough to sacrifice a little for a short time to keep our children safe, strong, and thinking for themselves so that we don't lose our children and then ultimately lose our country? That's where we're at. We need to take them back. In order to take them back, we got to step up. And so I'm challenging you to be praying about and if you have any questions, uh, email atjunbridled at gmail.com. And Keith or I, either one, would be more than happy to get back with you to help you uh, figure this out and pray for you, whatever that looks like. Or leave a comment in the comment section uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast. And uh, and we will respond and, and help you out any way that we can. And so, uh, guys, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. And if it has, please like, share, subscribe, and follow. And until next time, God bless.